Hello, Brian here from RLF Vacuum Cleaners in Lake Geneva. And today, I'm doing a quick video on this tower air fryer, uh, model number T170 79. Uh, this one here is completely dead. As you can see, I've got it plugged into my power energy meter. Let me zoom in like so. I don't know that's going to come up. But when we turn it on, turn the temperature up. It draws no power and the light doesn't come on. Uh, it makes no sounds, generates no heat. So what we're going to do is we're going to open it up and we're going to see what's inside. Uh, just a caveat before we go too far into this video. Uh, before we started, I actually pat tested this to make sure it was safe. And I've also checked the fuse. Fuse is good. So whatever the issue is, it's something internal. So what we'll do is we'll stop that ticking. Ding! We'll unplug the machine. And we're we'll trying to work out how you get into this. So I'll just readjust the camera. So my best guess is there's enough no screws or anything on the outside. So my best guess is this top panel must come off. It's a bit loose. So what we'll do is we'll use my special tool. Well, gently prize underneath. Looking good. Looking like clips unclipping. Ah, got the top panel off like so. This one's not too bad, actually just got four screws in the top there. So I'll grab the screwdriver and do them. So possible failure causes, loose wire, could be that the switch is damaged, not working, all sorts of little things. Can't see any other clips, can we? Any more screws, can we? Ah. Let's remove that. Ooh, we've got a couple of screws on the front. Just unscrew these two screws here, and you can see it's just popping off already. This one ain't gonna be too bad. Sometimes these air fryers are a big pain in the ass. Tip that over, what we got on here? We've 
plug in the temperature sensor in there. Wiring for your lights. Switch to the various lamp. What do I start off with? Nothing looks burnt. Nothing looks burnt, everything looks good. And judging by the fact that nothing works, I'm guessing we're probably going to be looking at maybe a timer. Timer issue, something like that. Or a wiring issue. Which is, yeah, it doesn't look too bad, actually. What we'll do is, grab the multimeter and we'll just make sure we're getting continuity to the switch and everything. It had a file on my right set on it. Relatively new to this new fluke machine. It's got the continuity is a different setting on the dial. It's got nothing there. nothing going up to the switch that's not to say that we're missing something but we'll just check the switch out anyway so we'll put a bit of time on the switch why is this coming from the camera so we're getting that across the switch so i reckon there's probably some sort of thermal fuse in here that's blown because we're not getting power to the switch we're getting power through the switch Through the thermostat. While we're here, we'll just double check the motor quickly. So the motor is that one there. Two. One there. Yeah, so we're getting continuity through the motor. That must mean under here, there must be some sort of thermal fuse that's blown. Space to play with. 
a bit of room to play with. We'll just check the heat down a bit while we're here. Won't get too far in. Yeah, I think it can't do it across the heat now, so there must be some sort of thermal fuse inside. It's gone. over, aren't we? Back in MO. Oh, back again. Uh, this particular model, power goes via the micro switch to make sure the drawer is in first. Before it goes to a level timer. I took it out. Maybe it's silly, I was thinking it's some sort of electronic thing, but it's a bit complicated. So again, live pin element is good so that must mean there's a fused must be some sort of break in the neutral then I'm trying to stop it from working so yeah I'll be back once I've investigated a bit more well back again I was chatting away like you do taking this all apart and the camera stopped filming so this is gonna be a brief recap of what I've done uh, to get this metal plate off, I had to remove the fan, 10 mil nut, remove the fan, remove the motor. To get to this bit, got this bit off. Underneath, we have a thermal fuse. I don't know how that's going to show up, we'll zoom in a bit. We've got one of these 180 degree thermal fuses. This is blown, so if I grab my multimeter quickly. that this is there is nothing across there now unfortunately the way this device is made they come with these little fiberglass sleeving over and I had to cut the little end crimp off to get the sleeving off to get it out uh, good job I did cut the sleeving off actually this is really really awkward because there's not really much room to play with there's not much wire to play with now I'm hoping I should have a length of this wire with the sleeving on somewhere if I've got length in blue we might be able to make this a bit longer and modify it and we'll have to come away of crimping the two wires back together again but we'll come across that this one looks like it's the numbers on it I gotta be careful because these devices they use um, heat resistant cable. This fiberglass braiding stuff is heat resistant. Doesn't say anything. Oh, okay, it's on the inside. It's a CE2. CE2. Yeah, I've got some CE2s. Yes, I think I've got some CE2, so we might be able to find a replacement one. Replacement one of these to change that. And then bring in a bit we got earlier. This is the bit I was looking at earlier. I don't know if it's 
wires any longer on these. Oh, it's not clear, is it? I can't bought these wires. Oh, a little bit longer is through. Uh, well, I'll play with it and see what we can find. Worst comes to the worst, we'll have to, have to modify something. But anyway, uh, these thermal fuses are held on with these little U crimps, and because we do quite a few of like Chinese appliances, they've actually got a a U crimp set and a special U crimp plier set. So I'll just grab that quickly. Yeah, the special crimp and all I got for these U crimps. Uh, there's a Chinese company called Iwis who make really, really good, reasonably priced crimp and tools. And this particular one is the SN-05B for U crimps. There's actually a special crimper for doing these U crimps. The difference between a U crimp and a standard crimp is that a standard crimp, an insulated crimp, has smaller size and a bigger size you have like smaller size to clamp onto the cable and a bigger size to clamp onto the outer cable sheath but these jaws they're just the same size all the way through they're not actually expensive these tools I think you can pick them up for about 20 quid and they make little jobs like this so much better because you can crimp stuff on properly and then we just have a tub full of different size u crimps for various different things and you tend to find you tend to use the smaller ones the bigger ones not so much because again, when you're dealing with low current domestic appliances. So what we'll do is, we'll grab our cutters and we'll start cutting everything up. What are we doing with cutters? Are they, no, they're not the cutters. No. Ah, cutters. What we'll do is we'll grab our cutters and we'll cut this off. Is that be longer? Yeah, it's considered to be longer. Let's see. We'll actually swap this white wire out for blue wire. Just so it gives us a bit of extra length to play with. Because again, there is absolutely piss all room. That wire's cut literally just the right size. So we'll grab our strippers. I tend to find with this fiberglass braided cable, these types of strippers are pretty good. Other automatic ones tend to leave um, little wisps behind, but these ones are pretty good. I say that, <laughs> I might have crimped it, you have stripped it, it's left all the wispy bits behind. But... I think we can't fix so a bit of a trim. So that's that end crimp like so. And the U crimps can be a bit fiddly sometimes. We'll get this in the tool ready to go. That's, that's the new thermal fuse U crimped on. Now U crimping is a bit of an art, unless you're doing it every day, you don't really get the hang of it, it's a bit fiddly. But yeah, that's U crimped on, so we're just going to push this fiberglass sleeving over. I'm just going to push this fiberglass sleeving over to give it some insulation.
too far. Right. That's in there like that. Right, quick status update. Uh, the camera stopped running again because it went flat this time. I forgot to, but we've got it plugged in on charge now. Right, we've got it all back together again. We're just going to put the final bits in. We managed to get it all nice and crimped up. Everything ready to go. So we get it all screwed down and ready to go. Here was a tricky bit. Get these wires back on the heat arm. The heat arm is not particularly good because it's a bit tighter down to the metal bends. Let's double check, make sure we haven't missed anything. Now we come to the fun part, getting the top back on. Right, and we're back again. Uh, we've got the machine almost ready to go. But like every repair we do, uh, we're going to test it first, make sure it's all nice and safe for it to be turned on. So we're just going to do a quick uh, medium current earth test, 8 amps. Should hardly any problems.
that. It's that low. The needle barely moves. So I'll turn it up to 25 amps. And we get at 0.05, which is very good. We'll go there for a few seconds. Good. And what we'll do is we'll do a 500 volt from my neutral to earth. Oh, one. Again, infinite is this side. If it's moving over this side, this side is one. As you can see, that's good. We're well over 100, which is very good. I'll put the drawer back in. And let's see. We're very good. Hold it on there for a few seconds. It's not going up, down. I'd say that's safe to go. What we'll do is we'll plug this into the power meter, see how much power it draws. In fact, I actually missed a step. Hang on, I didn't actually turn the machine on. I'll just do that pretty quickly. The machine's now going. Plug that in. Again, we're no, we're no different now that the machine's turned on. Yeah, all good. I'll turn it off again. Plug it into the power meter. So currently at the moment, we're drawing no watts. Got a timer on. Fan starts up, I'm drawing 22 watts. I have a bit of heat. Light comes on. About 1100 watts. Not too bad actually. Now, the trick will be, will it thermally regulate? So what we'll do is we'll run this for a few minutes. And drop the temperature down. Come out there. Uh, Thermal fuse is blown, so I want to make sure that the actual thermostat bit, which is connected to a little probe inside, actually turns the heat off. Yeah, you can feel it getting warm, warm air coming at the top. Oh, and you can see that the neon's gone off and the power draw has dropped down to 20 watts. So I'd say this is actually working pretty well, so we'll turn that up slightly. Neon comes on, power goes up, we turn it down, neon clicks off, power drops off. So I'd say this is working properly. We tested it, we're going to tag it up, give it a quick test, and that'll be the end of it. So yeah, if you're interested in air fryers or plants repairs, let me know. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.